Just a couple of days ago, the three astronauts aboard the Tian Gong space station were facing the very real concern of having no way to escape in an emergency. But not anymore. China has now launched a fresh spacecraft to support them. When you compare this to NASA's recent issues at the ISS, it's hard not to wonder how China manages to respond so quickly. So, here are their secrets. Blasting off at 12.11 a.m. China Standard Time, 4.11 a.m. UTC, on November 25th, a Long March 2F-G rocket lifted off from Launch Area 4 at the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center, carrying an uncrewed replacement Shenzhou-22 spacecraft on a rendezvous trajectory toward the Tiangong space station. Although Shenzhou-22 was originally scheduled for launch in 2026, this mission was moved forward for an important reason. It marked the first emergency launch in the history of China's crewed space program. The emergency arose after the Shenzhou-20 spacecraft experienced an anomaly, prompting the Shenzhou-20 astronaut crew to return to Earth aboard the already docked Shenzhou-21 spacecraft. Here's the full story. In early November, the Shenzhou-21 crew arrived at Tiangong and completed a smooth handover with the Shenzhou-20 astronauts, who had been on orbit for six months. According to the original plan, the Shenzhou-20 crew was scheduled to return to Earth aboard their own spacecraft on November 5th. However, on the morning of that day, the China Manned Space Engineering Office announced the return would be postponed due to a suspected space debris impact on one of Shenzhou-20's portholes. Zhou Jianping, chief designer of China's crewed space program, explained that on November 4th, the astronauts detected an abnormality along the edge of a porthole during a routine inspection. Initial images were taken with a standard camera, after which the crew used a 40 times microscope aboard the station to capture detailed photos from multiple angles. Experts on the ground reviewed the images and confirmed that a small triangular crack had formed. The impact appeared to have struck the outermost layer of heat-insulating glass on the spacecraft's porthole. During re-entry, a spacecraft endures extreme aerodynamic heating, with temperatures exceeding 1,000 degrees Celsius. Any compromise to the glass's insulating capability could endanger the astronauts, so engineers quickly launched simulation analyses, tests, and safety assessments of the Shenzhou-20 return vehicle. Because the affected component was heat-resistant glass, the key question was whether it could survive the high-temperature ablation process during re-entry. Engineers used a model of the return capsule's porthole, replicating the damage state, and conducted wind tunnel ablation tests. The results showed that the cracks were likely to continue propagating under re-entry conditions. China quickly pulled together a review meeting, and everyone agreed. With the porthole glass damaged, the risk of using the Shenzhou-20 spacecraft for re-entry was just too high. So the general command made the call. Shenzhou-20 would not be used to bring its crew home. The experts didn't hesitate. To keep the astronauts safe, the team decided the Shenzhou-20 crew would return to Earth aboard Shenzhou-21 instead. It sounds a bit like switching cars after yours breaks down, but in space, it's nowhere near that simple. A whole chain of tasks has to be repeated, and both the flight plan and timing need to be recalculated from scratch. Shenzhou-21 was set up for a fast, three-orbit return, while Shenzhou-20 was originally meant to come down after five orbits so the orbital math and mission coordination quickly became a challenge of their own. Still, it was great to see the Shenzhou-20 crew land safely, but the emergency mission isn't over just yet. After the Shenzhou-20 crew made it safely back to Earth, the Shenzhou-21 crew was still on board the station. They'd only been in space for about a month, on what's supposed to be a six-month mission. But in an emergency, they might have to leave the station and head home at any moment. The chances are low, but things like another hit from space debris, a major system malfunction, or even a medical issue could force them to evacuate. And for that, they'd need a reliable return spacecraft docked and ready to go. That's exactly what the Shinzo-22 mission was about. Shinzo-22 lifted off on November 25th and, after a quick 3.5-hour flight, reached the Chinese space station using automatic rendezvous and docking, the same fast-track approach used in earlier space station missions. The emergency launch went perfectly. Along with the spacecraft itself, it brought fresh supplies, food, fruits and vegetables, and a small amount of clothing to make up for what the Shinzo-20 crew had used during their extended stay. The vehicle also includes several upgrades, such as a better human-machine interface, a smaller instrument panel, 
an improved layout inside the return capsule, and a boost to how much it can bring back to Earth. It even carries a device designed to treat the cracks in Shinzo 20's damaged porthole. According to CMSEO, Shinzo 20 will stay in orbit for additional experiments. As for the Shinzo 21 crew, Commander Zhang Lu and crewmates Zhang Hongzhang and Wu Fei, they're now about a month into their six-month mission aboard Tiangong. They're expected to return to Earth aboard Shinzo 22 sometime around April or May 2026. This whole incident really highlights one thing. China's space agency can move fast and make big decisions quickly when it needs to. And that stands out even more when you compare it with a couple of recent situations on the International Space Station. Take 2022, for example. A docked Soyuz cruise ship sprang a coolant leak, again, probably from a hit by space debris, and sprayed frozen crystals into space. That made the spacecraft unsafe for bringing its crew home. Russia did launch a replacement Soyuz, but it took about two months to arrive, and the damaged MS-22 capsule eventually returned to Earth without anyone on board. Then there was the Boeing Starliner situation last year. The spacecraft experienced multiple helium leaks and propulsion issues, enough that NASA didn't feel comfortable putting astronauts Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams in it for the ride home. The capsule returned empty in September 2024, and the two astronauts stayed on the ISS until a regularly scheduled SpaceX Crew Dragon showed up, with two empty seats reserved for them. Dragon finally brought them back to Earth in March. By contrast, in just over a month, China's crewed space program pulled off a rapid sequence of events. A delayed return, a crew swap, an emergency launch, and the arrival of a brand new replacement spacecraft. So how did they coordinate all of that? And more importantly, how did they manage to pull off an emergency launch in just 16 days? In human spaceflight, nothing matters more than keeping astronauts safe. So even before the Shinjo 20 crew returned to Earth, planning had already started for a possible emergency launch to protect the Shinjo 21 crew still on the station. China's crewed space program actually set up this kind of preparedness years ago. Since the space station construction phase, they followed a one launch, one backup system. For every crewed mission, there's another spacecraft and another rocket sitting on standby at the launch site, ready to fly within 8.5 days if something goes wrong in orbit. China has two emergency launch timelines, an 8.5-day plan and a 16-day plan. The 8.5-day plan is used when astronauts need to be brought home as quickly as possible. But right now, the station is in good shape, the Shinjo 21 crew is safe, and their living conditions are stable, so the team chose the more flexible 16-day plan. Even so, the 16-day plan still cuts the usual preparation time by at least half. So how do you pull off a safe launch that fast? After Shinjo 21 lifted off earlier in the year, work at the launch site had basically wrapped up. But once the Shinjo 20 anomaly was reported on November 5th, crews immediately jumped back in and rushed to get the launch area restored and ready again. And luckily, both the Shinjo-22 spacecraft and its Long March 2F Y-22 rocket were already at the site in standby mode. To execute an emergency launch, though, everything has to be checked again. Every procedure, every system, every piece of equipment. Staffing had to be rebuilt, too, and that actually raised the bar for coordination. The solution was to keep the same core launch team that had just handled the previous mission, and then bring in additional specialists, but only those with hands-on experience with the Shinjo system. Since this was an uncrewed launch, teams also had to work closely with the astronaut support system to pack and load the crew's living supplies, food, clothing, and other essentials, into the right spots in the spacecraft. That extra step sped up the overall preparation for the mission. Originally, China's emergency launch plan didn't even include installing cargo at all. It was simply too time-consuming. But with a 16-day window, they had enough time to prepare the supplies, work overtime, and get everything on board. In fact, this mission ended up carrying more cargo than usual. Even though the spacecraft was flying without astronauts, the mission followed the same launch preparations, flight procedures, and technical standards as a normal crewed launch. Everything except the parts that directly involve the crew. For China, this whole response became a real-world stress test of their one main, one backup, dual-launch parallel model, and of their overall emergency response capability. 
Next, the Shinjo-21 astronauts will head outside the station on a spacewalk to inspect the Shinjo-20 spacecraft's damaged windows from the outside. After that, Shinjo-20 will be sent back to Earth carrying cargo, so engineers can study the damaged areas in detail. All of this ultimately serves one goal, better understanding the risks of space and making future missions even safer for the astronauts who fly them. There's now a bit of a readiness gap at Joy Kwan. The Long March 2F rocket meant for the next crewed spacecraft, Shenzhou 23, still isn't at the launch site. It's currently being assembled and tested in Beijing, and so far, there's no announced timeline for when it'll be shipped to Joy Kwan to stand by for the next emergency. The Long March 2F is China's only active human-rated launch vehicle, built by the China Academy of Launch Vehicle Technology. There are two versions flying today, the 2F-G and the 2F-T. The 2F-G handles all Shenzhou missions, while the 2F-T is used for China's reusable space plane and also launched the first two Tiangong space stations. All Long March 2F variants use the same propellant combination, dinitrogen tetroxide, in 204, and unsymmetrical dimethylhydrazine, UDMH, across the boosters, first stage, and second stage. The first stage is powered by four YF-20B engines, putting out a combined 332 tons of thrust. Four strap-on boosters, each with its own YF-20B engine, producing 83 tons of thrust, add another 332 tons. Together, the first stage and boosters deliver a total of 664 tons of thrust at liftoff. The second stage uses a single YF-24B engine that produces 85 tons of thrust, also burning N204 and UDMH. Fully stacked on the pad with Shinjo and its launch escape system on top, the Long March 2F stands 62 meters tall and weighs about 464,000 kilograms when fully fueled. The first and second stages are each 3.35 meters in diameter, the four boosters are 2.3 meters wide, and the Shinjo fairing reaches a maximum diameter of 3.6 meters. China's handling of the Shinjo missions this month really shows what a mature human spaceflight program looks like. And honestly, it doesn't matter whether it's China, the US, or any other country. When human lives are on the line, every space agency needs the ability to make fast, precise decisions. At the same time, spaceflight is inherently risky, so backup plans and rescue plans always have to be ready for all kinds of situations. That's just part of the deal. After all, we can't explore space if the people leading the way, the astronauts putting themselves on the front lines, aren't kept safe, right?